Patrick Henningsen and TNT. All right, ladies and gentlemen. All right, welcome back to the program. It's always great to have a visit with uh, none other than Joseph Arthur and to do a live rendition of what is quite an epic song, uh, which he wrote. And I was kind of present uh, for the creation of that one, and that's a great honor in itself. But it's great to see how Joseph has taken it and developed it, and it's just brought it to another level. So uh, amazing, and a little bit of special treat for our listeners there. And great to have somebody like Joseph who will come on and play live. Not all artists will do that. He's very confident uh, that he can deliver, and he's a great live performance artist. If you've ever had a chance to see Joseph live, it's an experience. If you ever do have an opportunity to see him, it's worth it to go, especially if it's a, a great venue. I mean, I'd even say it's worth it even to jump on a plane and see a gig if he's just a few you know states away and it's too far to drive. I would even say it's worth it to take a short flight uh, and see Joseph live if he comes to New York or if he's in Utah or some of these gigs he's got, I think, possibly Los Angeles. He's got a bunch of dates that he's scheduling in and in Europe as well. So amazing. Now, we're going to be joined um, in a few minutes by uh, Hesher, a.k.a. Brian McLean, host of State of the Nation with Timothy O'Shea here on TNT. And they usually air just after us. Uh, on the schedule so he's sort of following up after the Patrick Henningsen show so Brian's going to join us because obviously he's got his uh, finger on the pulse uh, with what's going on and this is the situation is really developing quickly uh, with this they really went for it I think they've kind of gone for broke I want to talk to him about this but trying to pass a, a hate speech bill among all this I mean these guys have really outdone themselves uh, in the government and uh, led by the Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, the Ohm, he's like the character from The Omen. There's something about him that is incredibly creepy and just a little bit too smooth. I don't know. That's just me. Uh, call me skeptical, but there's a motion to vacate sitting on his desk practically. We'll see what happens with that. But latest on this, they've got sort of 40 campuses around the country there's simultaneous protests going on. Uh, there was an order given out uh, to, UC, uh, to UCLA and Columbia, some of the high profile campuses. Where did that pressure come from? Did it come from the White House or did it come from the ADL? Did it come from the Israeli lobby? That's the question we need to ask ourselves. And we've seen how this brigade system works uh, with shutting down live events, anti-war protests, shutting down speech online, and I've had sort of direct experience with this myself. Uh, we've had uh, the government in one case invoked uh, the, terror the terrorist uh, directive uh, in the UK uh, in order to shut down a live event critiquing the mainstream media. It was called Media on Trial, and the city was in Leeds. It was a couple of years ago, and uh, they invoked the prevent strategy and then pressured the city venues uh, to basically disallow this event to happen. It was myself, Piers Robinson, Tim Hayward. These are top academics from Edinburgh University, Sheffield University. Peter Ford, former uh, ambassador to Syria, former British ambassador to Syria, seasoned uh, foreign uh, office diplomat, uh, Vanessa Bealey, journalist, uh, Robert Stewart, I believe, also an independent researcher. And uh, yeah, we were going to present our media on trial symposium. And uh, that was too much. That was too much. And so you can see how the media will uh, collude with government. And then there'll also be these sort of NGOs, like, for instance, the ADL. There's also a, a, a bunch of these other anti-hate bogus NGOs that the state use or the intelligence services use in order to help stifle free speech. And there's a whole bunch of them now, there's a whole gaggle of these organizations and they're, de they're designed to gatekeep basically. And how it works is the press will call the, let's say the administrators at Columbia and saying, hey, I'm from the Washington Post, uh, you know, we want, uh, are you going to shut these? Are they going to shut these protests down? Are you doing anything? We have reports of uh, anti-Semitism, uh, violence against uh, students, blah blah blah, and then they start to panic. And then the uh, other officials will move in. There might be a call from someone in government. Then you'll get bad, more bad press, and then people panic. And then the university finally relents and 
tells the police to come in and just steamroll the whole thing. They didn't have to do that. The administrative uh, bodies there didn't have to do that, but they did, and that's kind of how it goes. So I've seen this process myself firsthand over the years. It's very efficient, uh, and whether it's a J6 protest or whether it's an anti-war protest, the state and the establishment don't really care. They just want to shut down anything that's got that big capital P in it. It's called populism. Populism is uncontrollable. This is the bull, the beast that cannot be controlled, whether it's on the right or the left, and the thing that politicians and bureaucrats fear the most. So anyway, without further ado, I want to bring uh, onto the stage, I think we've got him in the house, Brian McLean, known by some as Hesher, host of the State of the Nation. What is the State of the Nation right now, Brian? Because there's a lot of crazy stuff going on. And these guys in Washington, I'm beginning to think that we have a problem. These people are not uh, playing with a full deck. Your yeah. thoughts? Yeah, I think uh, we got a big problem. The state of the nation is uh, in increasing dumpster fire. Uh, you know, there, there are uh, obviously new movements sort of waking up to the way geopolitics work, but... Um, I'm afraid they may be a little late to the party to gather the, you know, intelligence, uh, data, historical facts, uh, and unravel the mysteries, the esoteric mysteries of the deep state and, and globalist designs. You know, we're going to have Jay Dyer on State of the Nation today. We're going to talk about some of this stuff, how it all leads to transhumanism. But where we're seeing the rubber meeting the road right now is where it happens geopolitically and in the zeitgeist of the nation. So, uh, you know, you had Larry Johnson on the show a couple of times. We had the pleasure of speaking with him this week. And he makes the point that, you know, um, a lot of the, the, you know, geopolitical thinking of many, many, many college people right now in the United States is going to be forever changed because of this, regardless of, how much hoopla and you know, uh, uh, you know provocateurs like there's all this stuff going on. All this stuff is happening. Everything that we've talked about for years has, is all happening at a, a breakneck speed. It's it's like um, and it's 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 combining with you know what Obama said about his shock troops and how that was all going to work. Like this is all stuck into a set of real life um, um, identity politic. Um, and and technocratic cybernetic feedback loops right now. These things are all like self-forming and the social media is being controlled in certain ways, certain things being allowed on some platforms, some platforms off the rails, all the mainstream platforms functioning on very specific algorithms. We know for a fact that if Instagram, for example, didn't want to be um, showing all all these protests, they could algorithm that out the same way they did to us during COVID, but they're not for some reason. So uh, it's all very interesting right now, and I feel like there's you know things are changing very rapidly with regard to uh, public opinion of you know the state of the world, and it almost feels to me, Patrick, like uh, those in charge are either like you said, just completely out of control, and it's all falling apart on them. Or this is something that they're going to use to their advantage and maybe even have a hand in, in fomenting because it seems like they really want us to lose, all of us to lose all faith in all institutions. Uh, and that's a little bit scary because why would they want that? Well, to me, the dead giveaway was, uh, you know, that extra egg in the pudding, uh, over egging the pudding is trying to ram through a law on, yeah. quote, hate speech to try to compel political speech from mainly being championed by the uh, Republican arm of the two-party duopoly, but with full compliance from the Democrats pretty much across the board, um, but some dissenters on the Republican side, uh, who I am glad they're there, let's face it, the 10 or 12 of them that are there, fantastic. But that that's, that's like, the, that's, that's the kind of cabal going for broke, because they just can't bear to see these students break from the narrative especially on the Israel issue, because they've spent so much money. They thought they had it all locked down. They thought the hundred million or whatever that IPAC spread around to Congress and Senate, that was enough. They bought the media 
and they think, and who are these students? Who do they think they are? We're going to label them as terrorists. We're going to destroy them. We're going to make sure they don't get jobs. We're going to get them kicked out of school. Okay, that's what's going on. And I think it's quite incredible. And uh, you know what? And, and this is this is the thing. The the kids, that, and here the the study that I'm pointing to at 21st Century Wire was a new poll that was done by, and this kind of explains it, Hesher. And you mentioned a little bit of this before, but this this latest study, which was put out by J L Partners, um, shows a stark difference in attitudes towards Israel depending on whether you watch cable news or you get your uh, information from social media. And so most of these kids don't watch cable news at all. So yep. isn't that amazing how powerful the media is? This is a this poll, this study, uh, n- new study, cable news viewers have a much more hawkish view on Israel's war on Gaza. I mean, it, it's clear as day. It's clear as day. It's We all knew this. But now at yeah. least you can see the proof of it. There's it beyond a doubt now, this is the important component of the system. It is propaganda. Mm-hmm. And 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 as, as much as I threw in the towel with Gen Zers on everything else, you have to remember these kids were only 14 and 15 during the George Floyd riots, some of them. So or you know, whenever it was uh, what, four years ago. Um, so they're, they're, they're now, co- they now come of age. They might even be a bit smarter than their predecessors. They might be oh, yeah. a little bit more, just a little more street smarter. And that's all they need to be now because to, yeah. just kind of see through this. So I have a lot of hope for that, that at least on this issue that they can see through all of the madness and just see the moral question at play and i i'm I'm happy about that the rest of it the pink hair uh the uh the the crazy the masks okay whatever (laughs) hopefully they're gonna grow out of this stuff Mm -hmm. but on this issue they they they've risen to the historical moment and that to me is something to be positive about in the future that's my position at the moment i'm definitely not black pilling yeah no and and they've uh, you know, they've appear to be have, you know, learning lesson number one, uh, you know, and for me, lesson number one is that the media lies, the government lies, and that the identity politics are a sham, you know, everything is fake, to an extent that they thought was real when it came to, you know, so many things. So now uh, these, this is a whole generation of people that won't be ever watching CNN or MSNBC unless it's being clowned or trolled. Uh, they, they're looking, they're looking at telegram. You know what I mean? They're looking wait, at wait, telegram. Wait, wait, hold on. Are you they're... saying they're going to be laughing at Anderson Cooper as yes. he comes into his prime? Are you yeah. kidding me, Hesher? I mean, that is just, yeah. how are they going to find their moral sort of guidance without Anderson Cooper and morning Joe, Joe Scarborough? I mean, these are the Titans of mainstream media. What are you talking about, Hesher? Not anymore. This is the last generation of titans of media and uh, Hollywood stars. This is it. There's going to be no more Elvises. There's going to be no more Luke Skywalkers. I'm going to be talking about Luke Skywalker later today. That's going to be fun. Uh, so stay tuned oh, for that, that on guy. State of the Nation. Ooh, yeah, that, that guy. guy. I oh, saw boy. what he did. Ooh, Mark mm-hmm. Hamill. Terrible, yeah. terrible, terrible. What? A, and you know he's getting paid millions of dollars for that. That's the thing. These washed up people who are doing nothing but playing political theater uh, as as the empire is falling apart and the zeitgeist is, you know, at fevered pitch uh, polarization. You know, as the as the collective dissonance uh, discharges is that itself. Same, is that the same Mark Hamill that was raising money to send drones to the Ukrainians? Is same that the one. same one? Is that the same, same Luke Skywalker? Did he get yeah. kicked out of the Jedi Order, or what happened? Like this, that, that's a story right there. What what happened to his Jedi status? He burned the temple down. You know, uh, it's it's did, like he this... did. He did. Yep. Mm-hmm. He, that, wow, I, I didn't think about that. <laughs> yeah, sure, that actually happened in the last film, didn't it? All the writings, all the remaining writings of, you know, the the Jedi were in that temple. They burned it down. They killed their fathers. <clears throat> you know, I mean, that's that's what I'm saying. Like, that is our modern mythology, and that's what we're looking at. You know, the robots are gay now. 
<laughs> it's like everything got turned around from where it was when it was originally made. Oh, he, he could be Zelensky's next uh, defense minister. Who knows? Uh, stranger things have happened. <laughs> Actors have become president, so you know it can't. Yeah. We can't write anything off. But just, just back back to the back to the main subject. So, so so right now, uh, the 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 right. What the, are these are these really conservatives? Hasher are 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 these just liberals larping as conservatives? Oh man, yeah, we've got that. We've we've got the whole thing, and it's like, okay, so. Uh, you know, we were called terrible conspiracy theorists 10 years ago in the media if we were talking about globalism and technocracy and authoritarianism, um, apartheid, all those things, right? We, oh, that's not real. Chemtrails, whatever, you know, the moon. It doesn't vaccines. matter. Almost any, vaccines. Yeah, vaccines. All that. It was like you were called crazy. And here we are. And now here we are. And, you know, people in the mainstream uh, for the last, I don't know, five, six years, all of a sudden they talk about all those things and they've made million dollar cottage industries out of it. Uh, and, and while people like us have been shadow banned and, and targeted and had, you know, speaking events shut down by governments. Uh, so, you know, to me, it's like, okay, the, the window shifted here and the, the conversation is now giant, but the people that looked like they were standing with us for the last four years, it's like, oh, you, you're, you're awake to COVID. You're awake to, you know, J6. You're awake to, you know, election interference. You're, 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 you're awake to glo the globalistic WEF plan. Cool, yep. you're awake to all that. Right on, guys. And some of them even showed up two years late to, Two years late to being awake to the grift of the war on ukraine and the horror of the war in ukraine and the ethnic cleansing that we're doing there basically kind of in a reverse fashion all good everybody's cool and same with the shots they caught up with us on the shots and all of a sudden started talking about it in late 2022 well uh and we're all awake great we're all hand in hand and then this happens and it's like oh but you know, you know, those people can't have free speech because they're criticizing Israel. I'm sorry. You guys all of a sudden showed up late to the party and you were helping us say re bring back the truth about this country, which is that we have a freedom of speech here and we're all champions of freedom of speech and liberty. And that's growing. And speech sometimes hurts our feelings and speech sometimes doesn't agree with us and makes us angry. But we all have to have it. But not now, not now. So you see where your Republican Party lies. You see where your mainstream conservatives lie on this. And uh, sorry, uh, I bet some of them are going to be late to the party on this one too, but some are going to come around and many are not. This is going to be a wedge issue that doesn't go away. Yeah, you know, they, they made fun of the uh, left-wing students about wanting safe spaces on campus so you know to have like a room where uh you know, african-american students feel safe and not infringed by you know white patriarchy or women can feel safe and without the male toxic male uh patriarchy masculinity whatever and that was all everyone on the right was waving their their fingers or what they what what they call the right I, it really doesn't mean anything to me like that you can throw joe rogan in there as well and all these sort of johnny come lately uh you know influence Influencers. And they, they just had a field day with this, Bill Maher, the, all of them, okay? But now, now the so-called right, the so-called conservatives, they don't, they're not calling for a room as a safe space on campus. They want the whole campus to be a safe space. They want the whole city of New York to be a safe space where they feel safe, where they're not offended where they're not, uh, no anxiety or the feeling that they're going to be attacked by an unarmed student who they claim is a bloodthirsty terrorist. Not only that, they want the, the space between our ears, Hesher, our mind to be a safe space. They want to compel mm -hmm. political speech with this new piece of crazy, quote, hate speech legislation being pushed mainly and championed by the right in this case. So they want their Orwellian safe space. They want that yeah. one. That, right. Yeah, exactly. Chapter and verse straight out of 1984. So what in earth is conservative about that? I ask you, and I'll put that to Mark Levine 
as well, the great constitutional scholar on Fox who claims he's a constitutionalist, but le look, looks very sort of keen to come and shut down people's freedom of speech and assembly on campuses, just like every other cowboy on the mainstream media. Hesher, what the hell is going on? You got the floor for the final two minutes. It's like they, it's like they stood by and they let the pendulum pit in the pendulum, the bladed pendulum that, that floats above us and moves right to left as a society here in America. They let it go all the way to the left, further to the left than we've ever seen it. Hold it up there, sharpen it, drop the wire, bring it back down, watch it cut us, watch it cut us, divide us in two as a nation, allow them to do a fake pandemic on us, allow them to steal elections from us, allow us, allow them to let psychopaths get, um, encourage little kids to mutilate their bodies and have, you know, ruin their, their sexual identity for the rest of their lives. Everything, they've destroyed everything. And it's like the right just waited, waited, oh, we hate this, we can't talk about it while it's starting, but after it's a problem, we'll talk about it and we'll make a bunch of money talking about it. And then wait, you just wait. When that pendulum goes up to the other side, there's the right waiting to sharpen it again and bring it back one more time. And this time it's a holy war. It's a holy war yeah. and, and they oh, yeah. are participating with the left in destroying our constitution and our republic. They're doing it together. They're doing it in lockstep. They're doing it at the behest of all of the crazy creatures that many of these pundits claim to not like. And it all goes in the same direction. The end of America, the end of freedom, the end of all your constitutional rights, and it ain't going to be pretty. Yeah, who said it? Was it John Adams or, or Thomas Jefferson? An eagle needs two wings to fly, a right and a left wing. We have checks and balances. That's a great metaphor, the pit and the pendulum. A little uh, a nod to Edgar Allan Poe uh, as well, a great American literary figure and icon. But, yeah, that's a great analogy, I sure we got a lot to we got a lot to think about here. Let's hope the emergence of the self-correcting, rational, <laughs> reasonable center, that famous thing that America always produces, emerges right in the middle to bring order to this chaos. Right now, uh, we'll see, we'll see. But uh, Hesher, State of the Nation, you guys are up on deck in an hour here That's live right. on TNT Monday to Friday. Brian McLean, Hesher, and Timothy O'Shea, State of the Nation. Brian, thank you for joining us here on The Patrick Kennison Show. All right. Thanks for having me. There he goes, ladies and gentlemen. And we are going to go to the top of the hour news headlines right now. I'm Patrick Kennison, your host. On the other side, none other than Michael Tracy. Boy, am I looking forward to this conversation. All this and more coming up. Stay with us here on The Patrick Kennison Show.